I'm Adil Kumar sharing with you a series on absolute functions to be written as a piecewise function. Now in this series I'll take uh, two examples. Earlier I made one with four. There was very less space to explain and I also did a mistake fortunately. It was pointed out by my subscriber and so in time I've changed my series with two examples in each. So here are these two examples b of x equals to x minus 4, a of x equals to 2x plus 10. That was the question where I did a mistake. Correct. Thanks to my subscriber for pointing that out. And with the result, we have a new video, right? Here we have. So whenever you're looking into absolute function, remember, it could be written as a piecewise function. So let's redefine what is x minus 4. Absolute value of x minus 4 is equals to the positive value of the same which is x minus 4 if x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0 correct and it is equals to negative value of x minus 4 if this happens to be negative right that is to say x minus 4 is less than 0 correct now we could actually solve this inequality on the right side and rewrite this as x minus 4 if x is greater than or equal to 4 or I prefer to keep minus here itself it reminds us that you know negative of negative is positive and so you get a positive value outside right so when x is less than 4 okay but you could actually open this up and also write uh, like okay let me rewrite b of x as piecewise function now so I could write b of x as this which is x minus 4 where x is greater than or equal to 4 or I could write like this which is correct also I could write this as minus x plus 4 where x is less than 4 correct so that is how we could write it and if I have to sketch this function then this function will look like kind of like this it is absolute function which has been translated 4 units to write right 4 units to write so kind of like this do you see that so that is how this function will look like four units right so we can write this as four here if i substitute zero here i get four this point is also four so that perfectly defines our graph you can see that from the definition if x is more than four it is same as this line which is x minus four However, if x is less than 4, then this line is reflected. That is negative of x minus 4. And what you get is, is the graph of absolute x minus 4. Right? So, I hope it is absolutely clear. So, let's adopt the same method and do the second part. You can actually pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. So what we can do here is we can write, well, a of x is equals to absolute value of 2x plus 10. And we know absolute function can be written as a piecewise function. So the two pieces here are 2x plus 10. If 2x plus 10 is greater than or equal to 0 or negative of 2x plus 10, if 2x plus 10 is less than zero right so we can rewrite this as as let me rewrite this first 2x plus 10 we'll solve this inequality in stages and what we have here is 2x greater than or equals to minus 10 minus 10 okay or negative 2x plus 10 where 2x is less than minus 10 so when we take 10 to the right side it becomes minus that is a mistake I did in my video earlier. Okay, now we could write this as 2x plus 10 and then dividing by 2 gives us x greater than or equal to minus 5 or negative of 2x plus 10. x is less than negative 5, right? So that is how we'll define this particular function. Some of you may also write as we wrote here, open this bracket and write it down. But as I said, I prefer to write as such, as I've mentioned here. Now let me sketch this one also. So what we have here is this time, as you can see, the translation is kind of 
Okay, let me rewrite this to show you exact uh, translation, which is, so I'm just writing this part, 2x plus 10. Uh, remember, 2x plus 10, if I factor, I'm just showing it here, 2x plus 10, I could factor 2 out, is it okay? And then it becomes x plus 5, right? x plus 5. So this absolute value could also be thought about like this. That helps to uh, sketch the graph, right? So, let, so let's sketch this graph now. Okay. So the idea here is when you write like this, uh, you are here 0. That indicates that you have to translate uh, 5 units to the left, right? That is minus 5. So let's say this is minus 5 for us. Vertically stretched by a factor of 2. And of course, when you do uh, graphing, you do stretch first, kind of, say, let's say this is this, vertical stretch by a factor of 2, and you get your absolute function, which will be kind of like this, right? So, and to find this value, what you can do is, you can substitute x equals to 0. As soon as you substitute 0, you know it is 2 times 5, so it is 10. So that makes it stretch by a factor of 2. You get my idea, right? So that is how the function is. Now for these functions, you can see domain and range, since it is same for both, both. So in that case, let me write down domain and range right there for both the functions. Domain is uh, x belongs to real numbers. And the range is, is <coughs> y also belongs to real numbers where y is greater than or equal to zero correct so that becomes domain range for both uh, the parts of this question i hope in this video you have learned how to write translated absolute functions or transformed absolute functions as a piecewise function how to sketch them right so sketching you apply transformation you need not make table of values of course one way is make table of values which you could always do or apply transformations and then what could be their domain range. I hope that helps. So I'll take a few more examples in this series so that we perfectly understand what absolute functions are and how they could be treated in any algebraic expression. If you like it, you can put a like, share and subscribe my videos and feel free to post comments. Thank you and all the best.